right, guys, if you own a Ford or a Rivian, you were probably as excited as I was when Ford announced and Rivian announced that you can now charge at Tesla superchargers. This is a big deal. This opens up tons of opportunities uh, for non-Tesla owners to add thousands of chargers uh, and just make travel easier. However, there is a little catch. You do have to have a software update and an adapter. Uh, Ford was a little slow at rolling the software updates out, but I think most of those are, are finished now. However, the adapter piece is where Ford is really lacking. So Ford has been very slow at filling orders and most of you are likely still waiting on your adapter. So what I wanted to do today is talk to you about some other options. I actually have all three of the major adapters uh, and wanted to just kind of share my review of the Electron Vortex plug with you. Now I'm getting ready to go on about a 3,000 mile trip to Michigan and so I'm definitely going to be utilizing the Tesla supercharger network. So I'm going to take this and I'm exclusively going to use the Electron supercharger adapter. But I want to just kind of test this out, see if it performs as well as the Ford adapter or other adapters that I've used and just kind of let you know my thoughts. So Electron did reach out to me, asked me if I'd be interested in testing out their product. They sent it to me for free. Um, so that just a disclaimer there that I'm just testing this out. However, if this thing doesn't work or I don't like it, I'm going to tell you like it is. Uh, just right off the bat, I'll tell you that I have heard reports from people that the Electron chargers, there have been complaints that people are getting them stuck in the Tesla, um, to the Tesla cord. So when you try to remove it, for some reason they were unable to get those. And it's not just one or two reports, uh, there's been several. And if you're on internet forums and Facebook groups, you've probably seen those as well. So I'm interested in trying that out to see if I have any issues with that. So first, let's get the boxes out. I'll show you what they sent me. We'll open them up, do a couple of uh, quick tests, and then I'll share some supercharging uh, reviews with you on the road. All right, guys, so Electron actually sent me their Vortex plug, which is their supercharger to CCS1 adapter, and then they sent me a Tesla J to J1772 adapter. Now, the reason you need both of these is because the CCS adapter only works with DC fast charging which any level two type charger, a destination charger, or a mobile charger, that is not going to work. So you have to have this other adapter. Let's open up and take a look. Now, first of all, this tells you on the back, this is not suitable with any kind of wall connectors or anything like that for use with Tesla superchargers only. And I wanna also just point out something with this. All right, so let's just open it up here. It's a little easier to do this if you had more than one hand. So it's pretty, pretty well protected there. It does have a user manual to scan. I did, uh, I did scan this. The user manual is very specific in how to use this. And you think, well, how hard can it be to use it? Well, there are several reports from people online that claim they get their electron charger stuck where it does not release from the Tesla side of the port. And so Electron has very specific instructions. Uh, we're going we're gonna to follow those exactly when we use this at a supercharger. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of different things going on here. This is where the Tesla charger is input to. This goes into your truck. And so there's a couple of different releases. This release here is the one that disconnects from your truck. But underneath here, there's also a button that you can see and so when you push that, it goes down and releases it from the Tesla supercharger. So I think there may just be some confusion on how this works. Um, you would think that maybe not, but I know there's been several people that have had this issue. So we're going to test it out and we're going to see if we have that issue. All right, guys. So here are all the three major NACS to CCS adapters. Uh, just kind of set them out here so you can see the size difference. This is the A to Z EV. This is the uh, Vortex plug from Electron, and this is the Ford charging adapter, which I believe is made by Tesla. So you can see the size difference. This is probably about the same size as the A to Z EV, maybe just a little bit shorter. And then the Electron is obviously the longest one. They're all of similar weight. Uh, the A to Z EV and the Electron are probably maybe a little bit heavier than the Ford. Uh, but these are your options, guys. All right, so that is the CCS adapter. Now, here's the J1772 adapter. So we're going to go ahead and get this out. It comes in with, with a nice little case. I like that because 
Uh, as this is now, I guess I'm going to have to use these to, uh, to keep it secure or um, get some other sort of case option. Here, here is the Electron adapter. Now some of the adapters that I have seen are very short. They'll just be maybe this length right here. I actually like the fact that this is a little longer. Uh, this has the same mechanism here. There's a button under the bottom and then there's a button on the top. So, okay guys, I've got a Tesla mobile connector right here. So we're going to open this up. We're just gonna see how it connects. Um, I'll do some charging with this level two charger um, to kind of show you how that goes. But, but first of all, I just kind of want to take the Tesla side of this and we want to plug it in here just to see how it works. All right, so we'll just put it in right there. All right, so it just clicks on there nice and easy. It's very secure. There's no, there's no movement at all inside there. So if we want to release it, let's just push up on the bottom of this and slides out now really guys there should be no difference between this connection and a supercharger connection the connection is the same the core may be a little thicker but uh, that came off pretty easy so we'll actually do the same thing with this adapter we'll take the CCS adapter plug that in and I'm I'm pushing this up as well same deal nice and tight no movement it's very very sturdy and then when we get ready to release we'll push that pull out now the instructions um, tell you to leave this into your vehicle before you release the supercharger uh, obviously we didn't plug it into the vehicle so we didn't do that but that's that's part of the instructions that we're going to follow when we actually get to the supercharger but on the initial test guys it came off the tesla connector uh, very easily. Alright guys, so we've had the truck on the Tesla mobile charger all night. Uh, actually just came a storm through here. This is all wet. Um, connector is cool to the touch. Water didn't mess anything up. It's still charging. Uh, this is plugged into a regular 110 unit and so this is moving extremely slow. So if you've got a truck like this and you think 110 is going to be a charging solution for you uh, let's let me just show you kind of what we've got here so this has been on the charger for eight hours and 49 minutes charging at a rate of 1.1 kilowatt usually this fluctuates between 1.1 and 1.2 uh, we've added 10 kilowatts of energy for a distance of about 20 miles so in almost nine hours we've only gotten 20 miles so this is not a fast solution for charging but however if you're in a pinch uh, it will work uh, the adapter is working great. Again, I like the additional uh, length. It just gives you a little bit more uh, reach for your cable. So this is the only mobile charging option I have. I did not get a mobile connector with the Ford truck. I was just going to use the Tesla. Uh, so this adapter is coming in real handy. So this can be used on the road. Uh, the Tesla adapter, I've got the 1450 adapter as well. So I can plug into 110. I can plug into uh, like a camper outlet, maybe at an RV park, uh, things like that. So this is gonna be really useful. Uh, after about nine hours, it is cool to the touch. And I, I didn't expect it not to be. Honestly, this is low power compared to what like supercharging is. So it works great. All right guys, so I don't have two hands to unplug this. So I'm just gonna unplug this from here, like so. And then we will we'll see how this comes out. So push this here pull out no issues all right guys we just stopped at the tesla supercharger so i'm going to get my vortex plug out we're at one of the chargers that has a recessed kind of charging place here so that you don't have to pull up so far let's open up the vortex charger now i have plug in charge so this should just start charging we'll see all right All right, that's in. All right, guys, it looks like it's charging. Let's get the phone. All right, so we're going at 150. 
right now, so charging speeds are good. There's really no difference in this and the Ford adapter that I've used, so 156. All right, we'll check back in a few after we've put some juice in there. We're headed to St. Louis, so we've got to charge for a, for a little while here. We'll check and then we'll do the test to get this thing off and make sure we don't have any issues there. All right, guys, so we are at the supercharger and we take lots of stuff with us, lots of kids, lots of water, lots of food, lots of, prime. lots of prime. So all these accessories make the supercharging stops a lot more bearable. All right guys, so everything is going good with the charging. Uh, we're down to about 120 as far as speeds. I saw it as high as 170. And something else guys, again, you know, I like having this extra length. These uh, charging cables are very short. Not all charging stations have a station that's kind of back. So, you know, a lot of times you have to pull up really, really close. So just these few extra inches uh, can be really helpful as far as how close you have to get to the chargers. All right, guys, we've been charging for a few minutes now. We put 100 uh, or 63 kilowatts in, uh, charging at 100 right now, 144 miles, total cost 29.61. This is gonna be enough to get us to our next spot. So, all right, so we're gonna unplug and make sure that we don't have any issues disconnecting. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the charger here. And we'll wait for all that sound. Okay, and so now we're just going to, we're, first we're gonna disconnect this from the adapter. Okay, and then we're gonna take the charger out. No issues getting the Electron charger out. Speed's uh, about the same as the Ford charger. So this seems like a quality charger, guys. Uh, no issues with it, no issues getting it unplugged. All right, guys, we are at another Tesla supercharger. This is actually at a Wally's. Never heard of a Wally's, but here we are. So we're gonna stop the charging, see how this one works. I'm gonna push the handle, push the release there, you hear it clicking, push this. Straight out, guys, no problem. I don't know what all the fuss is about, but I haven't had any issues. All right, guys, we are at another supercharger. You have to forgive my voice. I've gotten a cold on the course of our trip here. Uh, we are in Stevensville, Michigan at a Meyer. Never seen one of these before. I come from the land of Walmart. So this is kind of like a Walmart, but honestly, it's a little nicer and cleaner. But out here at the supercharger, they've got lots of superchargers here. So I did have to park in the handicapped Tesla spot. Uh, there's nobody here. If somebody comes up, I'll move. We're just gonna be here for a quick top off before we hit the road. But I've been using this Electron. This is probably my sixth supercharge with it. It has performed flawlessly. I, again, I love the way that it kind of sticks out a little bit because your reach here, that has helped me at a couple of stations so far. So I've been really impressed with the Electron charger. Honestly, I like it better than the Ford charger. All right, guys, we have made it back uh, from our trip. Uh, I'll show you the trip meter here. So we have gone right at 3,000 miles, 105 hours of runtime, and averaging two miles per kilowatt hour. Now, just a couple things on that. The 105 hours was probably two to three nights of having the truck run overnight so it could power our fridge in the back. So that that factors into you know the uh, the efficiency and things like that. So we had a great experience with the Electron Vortex uh, charging adapter. Uh, again, we used it exclusively at probably 10 uh, or so charging stations. Never had an issue with it coming undone, never had an issue with it overheating, never had an issue with charging speeds. It just worked great. So if you're interested in one of these charging adapters, I highly recommend them. I'm going to have some links to this adapter and the J1772 adapter in the description below. You guys stay tuned for more stuff on the Lightning.